I'm Bruce A. Parr, and this is Frank J. Rich, and you're watching Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog. Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog is brought to you by Chase Media Group, provider of multimedia marketing solutions for an omni-channel marketplace and also publisher of The Penny Saver. And uh, we come to you to, uh, through, through both cable and YouTube. You can find us on YouTube and all our previous shows at Townlink TV. And the purpose of this show, uh, if you're new to it, and we always hope there are new people watching, uh, is to bring you uh, interesting people uh, in the community uh, who are doing things that you may be aware of or in many cases you may not be aware of who are making valuable contributions and as I know Frank likes to say as well as I like to say who are doing things right and doing good things uh, because we feel with today's media you certainly hear enough about the other things <laughs> too much about the other things maybe um, and we have a very interesting guest uh, Roger L. Phillips of uh, Close Encounter Studios and the Gray Zone. And Roger, I was going to describe you as an alien artist, but then, <laughs> but then I would be asking you, do you have your gray card? Right. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I've got to write that down. That's, that's going to be the next cartoon. Oh, okay. That's All right. one. Thank you. You're giving me material. Should I tell you where to send residuals? Yeah. No. Um, but you, but you, you do live, I believe, in uh, Putnam Valley. Yep, right? I'm so right you're in Putnam Valley. A, so you definitely fit the description I just gave our viewers as somebody, a, a local person who yep. is doing very, very interesting things well, in, you. in your profession. Um, so how did you, well, first of all, let, tell us, uh, you're a cartoonist and right. your, your brand, so to speak, one of your brands is the Gray Zone, which is all about extraterrestrials and aliens. And, okay, yeah. Uh, when did you first become interested in, in those beings? Well, it, it first started in the uh, mid-80s. Uh, my father and I saw that famous UFO that had gone over the Taconic Parkway, you know, in the Hudson Valley. And uh, my friend from high school, he, uh, he called me up and he says, go outside, go outside, and, you know, there's a giant you know, object in the sky. So we ran out and we saw that famous ship. So that really kind of kindled, rekindled the, uh, the idea uh, that I could do something with, with aliens, just and to have seen What exactly it. did you see? It was that famous boomerang shape, you know, lights in the sky. And it, it turned out that it, w it was one of the largest mass sightings of a UFO in the United States, or maybe even the world. So all these people had reported so that. Did it ever become an identified flying object? It never, never oh, did. Really? No. You know, some people attribute it to like ultralights or some sort of, you know, military. Right. Uh, you know, project or even uh, you know a hoax. Right. But whatever it was was pretty neat. And that mm -hmm. year was uh, probably eighty five, nineteen eighty five. I remember I was in high school. <coughs> yeah. and, and, uh, and you also do uh, UFO sculptures, right? Yes. Some of which right, actually we here. have <laughs> yeah, we have here uh, on the set. Um, but you know what what people may be quite taken aback to learn since you're you know a neighbor of people watching it is that your sculptures are featured on what I believe is the number one show on TV mm -hmm. right yeah. the Big Bang the Theory, Big Bang Theory on yes. CBS yep that would be this one right here that that's the one on the, that's show? The one on the show and that's the actual one or that, well you know like I, I had a replica, copies made yeah you know so I have a hundred right. of each I, uh, I used to uh, travel to China a lot and right. I was a uh, in another life I was a graphic designer and a uh, product designer and we we met these factories and people who work there and then uh, I designed them, and then they would produce them for, for me. And so I had 100 made of each. And so how, how did you hook up with the, the Big Bang Theory? <coughs> you know, I, I, I just, there was a fan site where people could contact them, and then the set designer contacted me and said that he would like to, uh, uh, you know, get one of the sculptures for one of the characters, uh, Raj Kutrapali. If you, if you look at his set, he has all these UFO and alien-themed, uh, you know, designs in the back of his apartment. So they, they had a Catwoman bust. And I became, he moved it, and then he put that right there, so it's, it's a great camera shot. And anytime you see Raj's condo, you'll, you'll probably get a glimpse of this 
yeah. sculpture. And you, and you sell these on your website? I do, on yeah. the um, On the CloseEncountersStudios.com website? That's correct, yeah, yeah, that's where they are. You can get them over there. Yeah. But I would think, uh, you know, with licensing, there would be an opportunity. I mean, are you allowed to use the, the title Big Bang Theory in any I way? I do, because, well, you know what, it's, it's truthful. It, it's on there. I don't say that endorsed by them or, right. you know, I'll just say as seen on. And, uh, of course, I have to sign this lengthy... Uh, formed by Warner Brothers Studios, you know, not to sue them and indemnify them any injury if this were to fall on a character's head or something. But ha has there ever been any discussion about about them selling it? As uh, no, a, no, they didn't. Or, I think it's just more of a, of a prop or prop, a set. You right. know, on, and so they're just happy to have it on, on the set. And I'm happy to have it. Now, I, I, anytime I see it on TV, I'll, I'll grab a still of it and put it up on the website. Uh, have you been on set? or have I, I've not. It's out there in California. I would love right, to. I, know, I would yeah. wish they would right. send me a ticket or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe someday. And when did you, when did you first start drawing? Uh, well, it's, it's not drawing in general, regardless of what the uh, subject there's, matter. There's a picture of me when I was six or seven years old in my room, and uh, I was a big fan of the Mad Magazine. You know, uh -huh. And I would, uh -huh. my parents would get me all of them, and I would copy, you know, the cartoons in there. And my whole bedroom is plastered with these cartoons. And so just freehand, you would just, just freehand them. Uh, so I would see my favorite artist back then was uh, Don Martin. He was one of the yeah, early. Yeah, I remember Don Martin. Yeah, yeah, he was big. In, maybe you could see it in my work, but he was a big influence of mine. And then I have hundreds of his drawings that I had copied, you know, pasted up on my bedroom wall. And there's a picture of me sleeping in my Star Wars sheets, of course, and, you know, <laughs> surrounded by these drawings. So very early on. Yeah. And one of the great things about Mad Magazine, remember on the back covers, they would have an illustration and then you'd fold it and it would become, it, it was so ingenious. Yeah. Al Jaffe. That, that, that was, was Al Jaffe, yeah. yeah. Al Jaffe. It was I really ingenious, it, yeah. 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 And uh, so, in looking at your work online, and it's very obvious that uh, you are uh, a, <laughs> I was going to say insufferable punster, but people yeah. have called me that too, so. But, but you really- Insufferable? Insufferable. Or, insufferable. Or, or, or That's punster. a good word. <laughs> Both, <laughs> <laughs> usually together. <laughs> um, but, so, yeah. so you love puns. Um, yes. I mean, is yeah, that ever since much. you were a kid? I mean, yeah. Were, were you the class play. clown, for example? I right? think so. You know, yeah. very animated and, you know, kind of upbeat. And I got that from my mom, and she loved wordplay. And, you know, and uh, my parents were from Hungary. So huh. they spoke Hungarian in the house. And then there was a lot of wordplay because as I, I was born here in the United States, but I, I learned the language, and I would mix them together oh, wow. to come up with new, <laughs> new words. But the, the gray, the word gray rhymed with so many things, and it's such a good good, uh, you know, material to start with. So well, I, I try to back off too much. I don't want to be known just as the puns. Right. Try yeah. to do other material too. But that's interesting. But we're really kindred spirits in at least two ways, the puns and then my maternal side is also Hungarian. Yeah, is it okay? So that's interesting. I knew I liked you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and who, what about, I'm curious, uh, like, do you have or have you had over the years sci-fi influences, you know, like Arthur C. Clarke and people yeah, like that. Yeah, all the big ones. Right. You know, like I mentioned Star Wars and, of right. course, Star Trek. So, right. you know, I was a big science fiction geek. And I would m make the models, you know, like the little building all the different spaceships and so on like that. So it was, and, and I, I was always a fan of astronomy, amateur astronomy. So I had a telescope, you know, since I was a, you know, early teenager. And, you know, always interested. Your father is involved in that as well? Uh, no, you know, he, he, it's funny, he's an auto mechanic, but he was interested in that. And he would read all the science fiction uh -huh. uh, novels in Hungarian, of course. I couldn't read them. I looked at the covers. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then, um, uh, do you believe in UFOs? I mean, are you, well, are you I, I think there's something out there. I've never seen an alien, per se, you know, and uh, it, uh, I Until kind you of came fell to the set into and saw this. Me or us. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of fell into this subject because. Uh, like I said, I was a, a product designer before, and then uh, after I lost that job, I said, let me, uh, what can I do on my own? And I, like I said, I had these connections, and my dad says, you know, I, I, uh, I, he, he loves this subject matter. He said, everything about aliens and so on, they were so um, cheap, and, you know, the products are not really interesting, like mm -hmm. little, you know, drink holders or keychains and so on, so we, let's do these detailed scenes and see if we could do something like that. And so that begat that, and then to promote them, I start to do the, the cartoons, and then the cartoons start to take a life of their own. Yeah. Right. Now they're hopefully taking off. And you also have books published? Yes, uh, so right? self-published right now. Right. Mm -hmm. so well, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's still published. It's published, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and tell us about um, Project Gray, the book. Oh, oh that, that? that's, that's my yeah. newest one. So uh, everyone, I, I put them up on... Uh, on, on Facebook. Right. So if you, if you go and to by Facebook, the way, not, your Facebook has about 11,000 followers. Yeah, That's, so it, it's getting so there, it's, which, which is pretty neat. Quite a so, follower. You know, I, uh, everything was put up on Facebook, of course, and then I would put them in a book collection. And then, you know, they weren't selling great, you know. And then I started thinking, well, why are they going to buy it if they could see it there for free? Right. So uh, secretly and, you know, being very sneaky, I, I drew two a day. And then <laughs> I, I put one in, the, in a secret book. 
know, and then I'm playing off the, the blue book, That's the project yeah, blue book from, you know, from the Air Force. Remember they released that, right. you know, the, the whatever we knew in Area 51. So I, I took off on that, and then I made a book of never before seen cartoons. So you know, like if you want it, you gotta, you know, right, yeah, you, gotta, you gotta get this. So book. clearly, the aliens book. have teeth. Uh, yeah, well, th this is actually <laughs> fr from a, a gag. The two aliens right. are, uh, are at a nightstand. They're about to abduct an older gentleman, and his teeth are in the, the water. Oh, I see. And then he, <laughs> he puts it in his mouth, and his friend says, you know, ew, put those back. <laughs> so he's, he's kind of showing off that he has his false teeth. <laughs> <coughs> uh, have, you, have you ever been to Roswell, New Mexico? I, I've never, but I'm going to make a pilgrimage out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of my books are out there. I made contacts out there, and, you know, the people carry them in those gift shops over there. Oh, oh no, yeah, the sense. little ale oh. e in that's one of the famous ones. Oh, yes. You'll see them in the movies. Yeah. And but you were saying, Roger, you're telling uh, Frank and I uh, uh, before we went we went on the air. I, you know, there's a newspaper in Roswell, and yet you've had a hard time getting. It was, was talk about ironic, easy. right? Yeah, I mean, you you would think even in the in the right. head you know of the of the newspaper there's right. a little UFO in the corner. And uh, you know, I, I got in touch with the, with the the editor there, and uh, you know, I kept bugging him and bugging him, and. Finally, he says, okay, we're interested in carrying your comics. And I was so excited, I get my first newspaper. Right. And uh, it just never, never, never panned happened. through, right. never panned out. Yeah. But I wonder, and, and I'm not being facetious when I say this, I wonder, if, I mean, did they, did they see it as some, some kind of a slight on, it you know, on be. their franchise, so yeah, to speak? It's, it's <laughs> interesting that you, 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 yeah. you bring that up because uh, I was on a, like a podcast type right. of thing, and then they had two legitimate scientists who investigate this. You know yeah. this phenomena, right. and they thought that I was mocking them. Right. Uh, yeah. So right. I was, you know, I said, no. You're alien phobic. You know, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I guess because they are on the fringe, they didn't like it that I was making jokes about it. But well, I mean, it's, it's an industry for them, isn't it? I, I would imagine. Right. You know, now you look on the Discovery Channel, or History Channel, they have an ancient aliens and right. You know, things like that. There's a million programs on it. You know? And by the way, when you mentioned ancient aliens, one of the other uh, uh, cartoons I I caught uh, was the one just just describe it to us about. Aliens are going to a Renaissance fair. Yes. And, what <laughs> well, and, what and to them, the Renaissance would be like Star Trek. <laughs> so they're wearing the, the, the Spock ears, right? You know, because for them, that's ancient history. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know. So that that would be Renaissance fair. So where where do your? I mean, th this is a question. You know, every creative person <clears throat> at one point or another gets asked, and it's one of these unanswerable questions right. to a large degree. Where do your ideas come from? I actually have an answer. Oh, you do? Yeah, okay, because right. there is a method to the madness. And, uh, and don't say they come from outer space. No, well, that, well see, I took off the tinfoil hat so I could get the signals. But I I the truth is, th I'll work with a situation first. So let's say a library, a, a film studio, yeah. uh, an interview. Yeah. And then what would happen if you, you impose an alien on that? You know, what if we were all you know, the gray aliens, what would right. or, or just the right. interviewer were one, what would, what would happen in that situation? So that leads to the ideas, you know, to them. So, so, I mean, and again, uh, you know, I'm being uh, more literal than it may sound, but in a very real sense, the commentary you're making is, is, is uh, really based on, it's human interest commentary. I, I when you get so. down to it, right? Yeah, you know, it has it, to be you, relatable in right. some, you know, something that we know about or right. that's familiar enough to the reader. Uh, some things can't be too inside information either, or, or, or too specific to alien knowledge, right. you know, or Roswell, or Area 51, because there, ne there needs to be a general, uh, you know, it has to be in the vernacular of the, of the, yeah. of the language that people could, you know, relate to it. But you, these are comics, and, yeah. and uh, you have purpose in them, uh, and it may be just to tickle people yeah. and exercise the yeah. smile muscles, and that's terrific. Um, is there anything else? Do you have any other agenda associated well, with Well, a little bit. You know, like I like to, to dance around the political uh, right. commentary, and, uh, but I, I like to really walk that line. So somebody on the left would like it, and someone on the right would like it. Uh, one of the, the cartoons is uh, I have the, uh, the three ships, you know, and then they're, they're famous for abducting, you know, livestock like cattle. Right, that's right, and which we have a little, right, on yeah, the so table there's a... Right there. right. And, uh, you know, I have like kind of like the uh, the '60s type hippie aliens. There, you know, he's, he has a sheep, sheep. he has a, a cow, and they're taking vegetables and they're you know, they're giving the, the the peace sign. You know, so they're they're, they're kind of the, the they're healthy. They're healthy the aliens. Yeah, right. the healthy. But you know, so it, it's <laughs> well, that, well, they are. It's the organic aliens. Yeah, aliens. Yeah, exactly. Organically grown. Because the other color mainly raised. It makes sense. Yeah. The other color of choice for aliens is green, right? Yeah. So it makes sense they would be, they would be they'd 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 going for the green. Right, you know, and exactly. then I could play off that, you know, the green alien, too. That's right. another, you know. But, but we, and we didn't really uh, talk about that officially, so to speak, the gray. Um, what is the origin of 
gray. A, a great point. I, before I started drawing the cartoon, I didn't, never heard of that term, a gray. But right. apparently, there, a, a gray is the physical being. You know, he's a little guy you see in uh, E.T. Uh, not E.T. Uh, yeah, a Close Encounters of the Close Third Encounters, Kind. Yeah, those little guys, movies, the big yeah. head. Oh. Great movie. So those were the greys, and then uh, there are the whites, which are supposed to be these spiritual creatures. Right. You know, they're like made of energy. So uh, I, I started to learn that term greys, and then they are these portrayed, especially in that movie Signs, you know, with Mel yes. Gibson. Which I, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I can't even watch these movies because they scare the heck out of me. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, but they're very cold and calculating and, yep. and kind of scary and, and unapproachable. But in, in my cartoons, I make them you know, more human-like. So they have the similar foibles and difficulties with life that we would have. Right. Oh, so I have to ask you, think again, you know, with the whole pop culture uh, realm, um, in terms of uh, a preference, Twilight Zone or Outer Limits? <laughs> uh, a Twilight Zone. Yeah, I think without, yeah, I think without question. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I, Rod I, Serling was a bona fide genius. Uh, growing up, all I had was a black and white TV, so I didn't right. know any better. So I, I, I watched it in that, and, right. and that, right. was my, that was my favorite. But again, you know, uh, out, Outer Limits, you know, there's a lot of sci-fi yeah. and that had more sci -fi uh, sort, of, sort of garish concepts. Twilight Zone was so rooted in humanity. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was brilliant that way. I, I, I mean, think so. And, yeah, then, and I think th th these guys walk that line, you know, because so yeah. they, they come into our world and they have difficulty with, you know, maybe some simple things like operating a door or a camera. Right. You know, it's because they're, 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 they've already evolved way past, you know, our experiences. Right. So, you, so you are a big fan of... Uh, UFO theme movies and yeah, yeah more so now like I said it's funny because I, I was a, an artist in search of a topic and and that's how I came upon the, the alien and I didn't see anything out there like that so I said let me see, can I do something that's going to stand out or or get some attention you know maybe it's right. so different and and some people tried to talk me out of it and say maybe you should try something different or have a recurring character right like a Garfield who keeps coming back right. or so on and uh, you know, I, I mentioned uh, Gary Larson in The Far Side, right. who didn't have a recurring character. Right. He, he was a single panel, and it was a gag each time. Situational, yeah, right. right. So, right. and I, I seem to think better in the term. Right. And and what do you make, uh, Roger, of uh, you know what now, uh, only a few years ago may have been inconceivable, and now is a very uh, you know practical uh, discussion about interplanetary travel. You have people like Richard Branson of Virgin, right, yeah, who's yeah. been espousing uh, that and uh, and oh, the fellow Elon Musk of, uh, yes, of the car uh, company Tesla, Tesla. Yeah, yeah. Tesla yeah. so what do you I mean would you you know seriously would you want oh, to have a seat on an interplanetary yes of course I yeah. mean you know that's that's very exciting and I'm, I'm a bit of a thrill seeker so I would love that right. you know I don't I don't mind I would try anything and uh, that might be a good fodder for new material too you know? yeah have Elon Musk or uh, and so and, and what are they saying that is actually supposed to happen uh, uh, soon right yeah. they already finished a test flight so now right. they're gonna oh, you gotta soon. drop yeah, down yeah. Quarter million dollars, and you're gonna. Yeah, I was just going to say the, yeah. you know, there the uh, some loops, but um, yeah. already right. he just comes up and then paid. I mean, with five million dollars, just with average people, not not. Uh, well, Dan Clark, uh, the author, the chicken soup author, um, uh, took one of those. Oh, planes. he's one of oh, them. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, he took it in a plane, not a spaceship, but right. it went out into space and came back out again. Right. Oh, sort of okay. like John Glenn's first, remember? That? Yes, exactly. Semi-orbit. Yeah. Semi yeah. 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 Like Mercury orbit. 1960, uh, yeah. Right. That reminds me of, uh, you know, right. The, right. the spaceship was that, you know, there's a famous Apollo 13 uh, mission, and there was right. damage done to the ship, and they had to rendezvous around right. the moon, and they couldn't land, and they come back, yes, and the movie was made of it. Right. So I made a, a gag where uh, you see the, the Apollo, uh, you know, module, and uh, the aliens had uh, crashed into it, you know, with their ship. And then one gray says to the other, let's just leave a note, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, on, the, uh, on the windshield. Yeah, on the windshield, you know, because they, they, they didn't want, maybe they didn't have insurance on their ship. But uh, 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 one of the fans of the, of, the, of the strip forwarded it to someone that they were friends with who is, happens to be Fred Hayes. One of the original Apollo 13 astronauts. Uh, he's an older gentleman now, and, and he became a fan of the of the strip. Strip, wow! And he says uh, he wrote me a very nice letter, which I'm going to treasure and uh, sure. frame it. And I won't put it on Pawn Stars. <laughs> so don't but he wrote a, a really nice letter, you know, th thanking me. You know, he says, you know, at my age, laughter is the best medicine. And I was the original alien, you know, going around <laughs> the moon, you know. And so that was really yeah, uh, you know, an honor to, yeah. to have him as one of the readers of the, yeah, of the comics. Yeah, that's fantastic. No, uh, speaking of rabid fans of yours, <coughs> um, you mentioned that there's a, a young woman who actually had a tattoo yes. uh, put on her arm of one of your One characters. of the greats. That, you know you made it you know, <laughs> when, when somebody uh, is putting your art uh, on their body. But uh, now she's on to her second tattoo, believe it or not. 
and, and it, she just sees one that she likes from the, from the website, and I, I said, all right, let me send you a high-res version. I think it's in that third book. Oh, oh there, is, there, there we go. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that's yes. a great, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, great, great Guevara. It's a great Guevara. <laughs> this was a bit of a controversy because people said, oh, he's a Again, murdering making, dictator. And I said, but I'm making fun of him. You know, I'm not yeah. you know, glamorizing him. No. But, but, you know, he's a, it, that's why you've got you to be careful around the political humor. But there's her uh, tattoo of... And, yeah. and that, that's from a, a cartoon where the alien is having a staring contest with a snake. Because I don't think either of them really blink. <laughs> so, you know, I and then I think on her other arm, she's going to have the snake right. you know, put on. So she's going to have the complete set. But she's a, a, a fan you know, of the strip and, yeah. and obviously a, that's a, a rabid fan. And they are seeing this strip primarily on your Facebook on page. On the Facebook page. And, and I, I think now it's so hard to, to be published in the traditional route. You know, you need an agent. And right. You can't get an agent unless you've been published. And you can't yeah, be published unless you have an agent. So there's a catch-22. Yeah. So with the self-publishing and Facebook, you're able to reach an audience. And I can sell some books through, through that. And some people support the, the comic strip that way, which is nice. And yeah. you know, some people get the whole collection. And uh, I have a few rabid collectors who say, you know, make sure you put it in cardboard because I don't want it wrinkled up. And it's on their bookshelf, and that's, that's, oh, that's so yeah. cool to see that. Yeah. And then you also, you had mentioned Star Trek a little while ago, yeah. and, and as far as <laughs> fans, you mentioned George uh, Takai. Yes. Right? <coughs> George Takai of George Star Trek. George Takai, Sulu. A, yeah. a, a lot of people may know he's very active on Facebook and Twitter. Yes, no, he's, he has he's, millions he's, of followers. he's really out there. Yeah, so he really is, but he's one of the bigger... Yeah. Uh, he's out there in public a lot. Uh, yeah. In public, and he's politically active. Yes, right. He, uh, hold on, let me just find the one. Anyway, uh, he had seen one of my comic strips, and he, he put it on his page, which has you know, 10, 20 million uh, viewers. And, and uh, it, was, it was this one with the protesters. I don't know if everybody oh, remembers the uh, Occupy uh, Wall Street. Yes, yes. Great kind of a, you know, And then he liked That's the uh, a Great Pride. Great Pride. Great Pride. Yeah. 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 He liked yeah. that one. So yeah. <laughs> he put it up, and it got 15,000 likes. Right. Exactly. And it was shared you know, 30,000 times. Yeah. So that yeah. got a lot of viewership. But of course, I didn't put my, my website on the bottom of the cartoon. You know, uh, oh. So yeah. I missed an opportunity uh, there. Uh, but yeah. at least the name got out a little bit. So yeah. that was neat. And then yeah. he, Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so they have uh, Occupy Earth, Abduction is a Right, Down with Gravity, uh, Chewbacca for President, and Free Area 51. <laughs> yeah, so, so when Frank before was asking you, you know, is there uh, a deeper meaning in some, er in some uh, of your cartoons or an agenda, I mean, there's social commentary there, I obviously. Think so too. Very, with a very light touch and a yeah. humorous touch, but, but it's to social commentary. You know, yeah. It's funny yeah. how, how polarizing some of the cartoons yeah. can be, you know. Uh, I, I, I did one that had a bit of a religious theme to it, uh, where uh, uh, Moses, the, you know, the story of Moses parting the Red Sea, and uh, in, in my <coughs> version, uh, instead of the uh, Israelites, you have uh, the aliens, the greys, dressed up in that period clothing, and, and ahead of them is a cow, and, and he has the staff, and, and it's called Moses. <laughs> so he's, he's but that was kind of, you know, polarizing. Right. Some, right. some they, people loved it. Just before they beamed him up, right? Yes, exactly. So he's part or of the Red Sea, and the aliens are following him. But it's, but it's also, it's also as with so much of art, or maybe even the purpose of art to a large degree, is it's whatever somebody takes from it, whatever somebody wants to take away from it. Now, you know, one of the uh, cartoons I, I glimpsed of yours where. You know, somebody looking at it, I could see at first blush is going to say that is extremely offensive to me. Okay. But where you say God hates astronauts, but which one? Well, oh, maybe it wasn't yours. Oh, it no, was Comic God. Con. Oh, it wasn't God. yours. Yes, yes. Yeah, it was oh, Comic Con. Right, yeah. You you were being interviewed, and behind you at yeah. a booth at Comic Con, I go, I look That's at right, it. That's right. Yeah. And, it and said, there's a big po poster. So it wasn't yours, me. right? No. So it wasn't yours. So but, strange. But yeah. you know. But again, I took away from it. It's making a comment. You know, uh, don't uh, yeah. don't speak for him. Yeah, by the way. yeah I, I think so too. <laughs> Look, you know, don't tell us who he likes or doesn't like. As you an know? artist, you want to be somewhat right. edgy without right. being off-putting. Right. And uh, you know, some of my uh, friends right. say push it a little bit so you'll get attention. So that's something you would never do. I would never. Right. I don't want right. to offend anybody. You don't want to get you know, into that, right? I, uh, you know, I, I respect right. everyone's right. beliefs. And but I like, anyhow, my I like point is, I understood. I understood at least in my own interpretation what they were trying to say. Right. You know, and Comic Con is. Crazy. Right. That was right. in New York City, the one you're referring to, and it was, right. you know, there's some wacky things going over there. And just to be in amongst those other people was was awesome. No, and that's a huge convention. Oh Comic my God! Con, it right? was the it's largest one ever. Well, you, I know City it started Con. in San Diego. Yeah, yeah and then right. now, and now we, us in New York, we beat them, you know, by thirty thousand people. Yeah. Right. You know, and yeah. then of course you see the costumes and and not much uh, the aliens, the Greys, you know. So maybe is, I'll bring that next There is something about time. that. Yeah. The largest country in Western radio station in New York City. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. 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 And, and <coughs> you're also, we should mention to people in terms of social media, you're, you're also on Twitter. Yep, right? okay, you yeah, have, yeah. Uh, 
And so how often do you tweet? You know, it's connected to the, to the Facebook. It's linked to it. Right. So uh, e each time I do a comic, I'll have a little uh, uh, tagline, like a name for it. And then, of course, that'll tweet out. Yeah. And then I try to make it somewhat interesting that somebody would be willing to click on it, and it'll take them back to the, to the page, and they can see the comic. Or I think you can expand it, and you'll see a little preview of the comic yeah, yeah, inside sure. Twitter. Yeah. All right. And what about, well, we've touched on this a little bit, but um, you know, you do a cartoon, a, a panel a day, Every right? Day now, so, for th over two years. so there's a lot of opportunity um, for you. It's almost like a constant focus group, you know, in terms of your. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm sure there have been audience reactions that one way or the other uh, have surprised you, right? The, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you know, I, 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 what's amazing about Facebook is you get the instant feedback, whether you're onto something, whether it's funny. And, and some things I, I, I drew, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. I put it up there and it, it goes crazy. Yeah. And then another thing I'm so proud of, and I worked hard on it. And uh, nothing, yeah. you know. I, I drew one with a, with an alien and a, and a beaver, and, and he built this incredible beaver dam, you know. And I drew every stick, and it took yeah. me, you know, hours and hours and hours. I thought it was so funny. No, it, it and the beaver's good. panicking because it's starting to leak, and the alien's plugging it with his finger. <laughs> but it didn't, it didn't land, you know. It yeah. didn't, didn't, no, it didn't it, work. It, and then some, common, someone I just yeah. cranked it out in 20 minutes, and then it, it, it killed. So yeah. you know, you're getting. It's almost like being in front of a real audience, you know, because. It's real-time feedback. Right. Uh, how long, uh, Roger, does it take you to actually draw a, a panel? Uh, basically an hour and a half, you know, and then if it's more detailed like that one, it can go into the hours. Uh, and then, you know, I, I draw it the old-fashioned way with a Sharpie marker on a big tab, uh, you know, tablet of paper. Right. I have a $99 digital camera from Walmart, and I to photograph it, put it onto the computer, add the caption, a little bit of shading. Yeah. Save it up, you know, upload it to Facebook or, or the own web page, and then it's out there, you know. Yeah. And every day. Well, what time of day do you, know, you have like about a, seven a routine seven where you. Yeah. 7 7 30. And, and I used to be good around 4 30, our time, because it, uh, you can do the analytics of how it's doing, and it turned out that London is the biggest city that reads the strip. England. Really? Huh? Yeah. And, and I, I sell most of these things and the books to people in Australia. They're so fascinated because this is such an American. Yeah. Thing, I guess, you know, the Area 51, <coughs> they are fascinated. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Very interesting. So, I mean, have you, have you ever gone and uh, spoken at conferences, you know, given presentations? Not yet. I did a, a few things. I was invited to, to like a uh, Lake Area Paranormal Group, you know, and I'm going to speak over the phone. And they, they have a, you know, people are getting together in their group. So I was invited to speak to that. Right. I would love to give a big presentation, you know, where I have a big screen and I could put up some of the cartoons and inspire future cartoonists. And, and what about uh, animation? It would seem this would lend itself. Yeah, I, I, I back in, the, you know, way back, I was in, in college and I took some animation courses, but again, the old school, you know, with the cell, yeah. the, you know, like a Disney right, style, okay, right. you know, and uh, I need to brush up my skills with something like Flash and then, you know, put them yeah. into it or find a willing volunteer, you know, to do it for me. Right. But yeah, I, they I would lend themselves, I think, you know, a little. Oh, vignettes. clearly. Oh, no, very much so. Clearly. Yeah. 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 And, oh, absolutely. and now, the, right. I think it's much easier yeah. now. You create one character, and you can move him. Right. Well, well yeah. it, it, the, car, the, the, the drawing is so two-dimensional. If you put it on the web and you somehow animate that, yeah, that, yeah, that'll, then, it, then, that'll work. Yeah. That would work. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, that's the next step. So I just want we have to wrap it up, but okay. I just want to, uh, as a uh, final flourish, uh, ask you to describe um, the cartoon where the aliens are coming with the pea pods. Oh, that was a, a very popular one, and, and I didn't think it was, it's a, it's a pun, right. but it, it works so well, you know, they're coming off the ship, and the, the, the famous line when, when the aliens come to us is say, we come in peace, you know, or, you know, don't be afraid, and then their heads are inside giant <laughs> pea pods, you know, and, and then there's, you know, their head is in it, and there's green, large peas, and they say, we come in peas. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just did. I don't know why. It, and I thought it was okay, and, and it did great. And I don't think it was one of my better ones. And, and, and it killed. So you All never right. know. Well, and that's why I wanted to sign up saying, and we come in peace, and we go in peace. <laughs> and we thank you for watching Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog with our guest Roger L. Phillips. Uh, alien artist or uh, extraterrestrial or cartoonist, or, or artist of aliens. Uh, artist of aliens, <laughs> right? And after the show, we'll, uh, Roger will show us his great card. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> thank you for watching. Remember, when Bruce the Blog listens, people talk. <laughs>